Magnus Carlsen and Vishian Nan just played one of the most incredible games that I have ever seen in my life. This was a 72 move game, but we're starting from move 56, which is this position right here. This position is so incredible that it could be a composed puzzle. Now, if you don't know what a composed puzzle is, I do a lot of puzzles on the channel where somebody takes the pieces, they put them in a specific position to make some cool stuff happen. But this position looks like a composed puzzle, but it was actually from a real game. Let's take a look at what's so incredible in the fireworks that you are about to see. So first things first, Magnus is playing with the black pieces. He's invaded with his king, and he's putting a lot of pressure on Vichy's pawns. He's attacking this one. He could potentially come over here and attack this one. He also has his bishop lined up here. We have this kind of classic bishop versus knight rivalry where everything is relatively equal. Pawns are equal. Pawns are equal. Black is down a pawn, but because of the active king, is actually looking pretty good. And here is where the fireworks start. Vichy, realizing that his position is not looking great, comes up with an incredible idea. He plays the move b5, and it looks like he's just giving up this pawn for free. Why would he do that? Well, because he wants to create a pass pawn. But you say, even if he pushes it, what's he going to do? Because the bishop is controlling the square. It looks like it doesn't have any purpose. But watch what happens. Watch his idea. a6, and Magnus starts to get his king into position. This is an important move because he wants to start pushing his pawns. But if he pushes right away, the problem is that after the capture push, Black's um, White's king is going to blockade the pawn. Okay, so Magnus needed to cover that square. So that is why he starts with here, getting ready to now push and escort his pawn down to become a queen. So watch what Vichy does next. A7. And again, it looks like he's just sending the pawn to get captured for no reason. But wait for it, bishop comes back, and knight takes f5. Here's the idea. He wants to give up, now forget about the blunders for just a second. He wants to give up his knight, start pushing this pawn, which won't be able to be captured because the bishop is already guarding the a8 square. So watch what happens next. Magnus takes the knight, and here we go. And we have these two pawns racing down the board, trying to become a queen, and the bishop is not going to be able to stop them. Say, wait a second, Nelson. The eval bar says Magnus is winning. What's going on? Well, Magnus is not just going to sit around and wait for his bishop to be overworked. He's going to start pushing his pawns to try to get his own queen. So b4. And remember, his king is already in a perfect position to escort this pawn down the board. So, like, for example, if Vichy would have taken this, guess what? c3 check. And then here comes the pawn for a queen. So what does he do instead? He keeps pushing, and now he's threatening to get the queen. Magnus captures with check. Here she sidesteps here. Now, why did he go here? It's because after the pawn pushes, he doesn't want his king to be on one of these squares where he gets put in check as Magnus gets the queen. Okay, so let's see what happens next. Magnus pushes. He's threatening now to get the queen, but so is Vichy, and he plays AA queen. Now, some of you are probably thinking, wait a second, didn't he get the wrong queen? That's the one that can just get captured. Why did he do that instead of the other one? Watch what happens if he gets this queen. C3 check unleashes this pawn to control this square, but more importantly, the check forces the king to go to a dark square, and then black can promote with check, and now he's hunting the king, and white is in trouble. Okay, so that's kind of the very clever idea. So now, why did Vichy play this pawn? Because now if Magnus tries c3 check, guess what? He's going to take that bishop with a check of his own, and now he's going to win the game. So he stops the c3 idea. Okay, so very clever. And his point is that after it gets captured, which is what Magnus played, he now is going to get the queen. And by the way, I should mention, this was a rapid game, and you can see the timestamps there. These players are playing this game with only a few seconds left on the clock. So that makes it even more spectacular, the finish that we're about to see. Okay, so Vichy successfully gets the queen first, but why is the eval bar saying that black wins? There's one move here for black, which is the winning move. If you would like to pause and try to find it, how can black win this game?
Well, if you had a chance to do that, the incredible move here is pawn to c3. It's absolutely ridiculous that this is the winning move. You might think, like, why don't you get a queen? Why don't you save your bishop? You have all these other things you could do, but no, c3. Three. What's the point? Well, the point is, first of all, if you get the queen right now, white has an incredible idea. If you'd like to pause, how does white save the game? You had a chance to look at that. The move is queen to e3, check, sacrificing the queen. And the point is that if you take it, it's a stalemate. Your king cannot move. Your pawns cannot move. It's a stalemate trap, and there's nothing else that black can do about that. If you go here with your king, guess what? Queen to e2 check forces you now to take the queen, and it's a stalemate. Absolutely incredible. Okay, so you can't get the queen. What if you just save your bishop? This is actually what happened in the game, but now it opens up the opportunity for checks from white's queen. The reason that c3 was the winning move is because it's cutting off the king and now you are threatening to get the queen and there's no longer going to be a stalemate trap you might say well what about white's queen and yes it can put you in check but you can just sidestep and now what is the queen going to do it can't stop the, the queen from behind because you've got an extra pawn you can't go here or here to stop it you you can't do anything you can throw in a check now the bishop blocks black is getting the queen and is going to win the game. Absolutely incredible move. However, in the game, Magnus played bishop to e4, and Vichy now has a chance to save the game. So let's see what happens. Queen to d8, check. Magnus blocks with the bishop. Vichy goes queen to d4, which is not the best move, but he does have an incredible idea. What's his idea? After Magnus gets the queen, queen to e3, check. It's the same stalemate trap that we have seen before, and again, it's going to be a draw. However, Magnus is too clever for that, and if you would like to pause, what do you think he played next? You had a chance to look at that. The move is c1, not a queen, not a rook, but a knight. He gets it with check, and basically what he's saying is, I'm not gonna stalemate you now, but I have enough pieces to support my pawn pushing down the board to become a queen. And you can't stop me even though you have the queen. So watch what happens. The king goes to a3, c3, here comes the pawn. Vichy tries to do something. He's gonna go try to hunt this. The knight comes over, he captures the pawn. c2, he's about to become a queen. And there's another interesting thing happening here is that if the queen tries to come over and trade, and then white pushes this pawn. It looks like it's going to become a queen because the bishop is not in time to stop it. So how does black win the game? You had a chance to do that. The knight is perfectly positioned to actually get there just in time, knight to g6, and stops the pawn from becoming a queen, and black wins. Absolutely stunning game that is going to go down in the history books as one of the greatest endgames ever played. Okay, this is absolutely incredible. Just to recap, you had the, the knight sacrifice setting up the two pawns pushing down the board. You had the this idea of pushing the pawns here, the queen sacrifice. You had the stalemate attempt here. If you get the queen, you get stalemate traps. And then to finish it off, the under promotion to the knight was the only way to win the game, all when these players had seconds on the clock it's absolutely incredible and i hope you guys enjoyed that as much as i did thank you for watching stay sharp play smart and take care